And the next speaker is Mr. Arnott in two minutes. Democracy is democracy is democracy. The true test of how strong your commitment to democracy is, is what happens when people start expressing views that you don't like. We've heard some pretty awful examples, frankly, of the expression of freedom of speech uh, right here. Uh, this house contains everything from communist to fascist, vile views from far right to far left. And when we hear things like uh, Corwin Meeker's views on women and equal rights, I don't want to defeat them through suppression and penalties. I want them to be defeated at the ballot box. When we hear communism or fascism expressed in this chamber or frankly anywhere else, I want it defeated in public democratic debate. And so it is, I think, with the European political parties. Weber wants to state fund them, but only if he likes their views on the European Union. While well, state funding views you like and suppressing those you don't, that's not Voltaire. That's Orwell. But I think a lot of people who are pro-EU fear Eurosceptic views and fear the popularity of Eurosceptic views. But you can't stop an idea whose time has come, and our time came on June the 23rd last year. But I always try to take a broader perspective to ask what it would be like if the boot were on the other foot. And I just wonder, from the UK, I I'm a unionist, but could you imagine the uproar if the British government had treated the Scottish nationalists in this way? I don't agree with their secessionist mantra, but it's the right of the people of Scotland to decide their own future as they recently did in a referendum. And if we in the, in the UK treated the Scottish nationalists in that way, in the way that this place treats Eurosceptics, then the people would be up in arms. And I think it's a testament to what this place uh, how ineffective those European political parties are, uh, that nobody even notices. So I'd rather scrap them all together, stop pouring taxpayers' money at it. Thank you, Mr. And which Anna. is it going to be? Orwellian Thank you. groupthink or democracy? Mr. Arnott, uh, uh, there are three uh, blue cards, but I accept only one of them. Um, do you accept this from uh, yes. Mr. Rubik? Mr. Rubik. Yes, I have opened it. Thank you. Ich möchte mich bei der Präsidentin sehr herzlich bedanken. Thank you very much indeed, Madam President. Well, I think that we have a democratic, a direct democratic decision in the UK. That uh, there was a, a small minority that decided to leave democracy in Europe. So why are you still here in this parliament? Why are you still making speeches here? There was a direct vote which decided that you wanted to step out of democracy in Europe. And you want to preach to us about democracy. What's the reason for that? Mr. Arnold. Uh, well, um, you say a minority, but of course a majority voted in the United Kingdom to leave the European Union. If you want to know why we're still here, then I think that's a question that very much needs asking to Theresa May and to the British government, who still haven't got round to invoking Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty. So it's not our fault that the government is dragging its heels. It's not our fault that the government is taking so long. But every day we're still here, we're still paying into the EU budget. We've talked in this House recently about guidelines for the 2018 EU budget. We are going to be paying for that through our taxes. And Thank so, of you, course, Mr. we have a right to have our say. Thank you. The next speaker.